Because of our use of artwork, Catholics often get accused of idolatry. The images on the wall behind me have prompted a number of such accusations in the comments. Perhaps these individuals mean well, but I actually would argue that they are confusing two things that look the same, but are in fact substantially different. So why then do Catholics use artwork? I will explain next, but first, as always, we start with our mission. Always remember, God created us for this time and for this place. If we learn this faith, if we live this faith, if we share this faith, what will the next 100 years look like? Join the mission. Triangles and squares are very similar. In some sense, they look a lot like each other. They both have straight lines, they both have angles and points. But despite all of these simil similarities, triangles and squares are substantially different. If you're taking an exam and you identify this as a square, you will fail the exam because that would be wrong. You have confused two different things that admittedly look similar. How about another example? Marriage and hooking up. In many ways, both of these look very similar. However, they are substantially different. I would argue that our inability to distinguish between these two has confused generations who are now struggling with the consequences of this confusion. There's a huge difference between an idol and an icon. All idols may be images, but not all images are idols. For example, my aunt, God rest her soul, passed away this last week, and the funeral was this weekend. At the funeral home, there were tons of images of her. Are those images idols? Were we there to give worship to her through these images? No sane person would argue that, but that's what many of you accuse Catholics of doing. An idol is something that is worshiped because for some strange reason, someone attributes something divine to that image. That is the defining characteristic of paganism. This is completely antithetical to Christianity. But to confuse this with Christian art, which is substantially different, would be like confusing triangles for squares and marriage for hooking up. Christians have used art for millennia for the purpose of communicating the gospel message. But lately, some have argued that scripture actually condemns images. They'll cite Exodus chapter 20, which says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. If this were the end of the scripture, I, I could see how you could conclude that the Bible prohibits images. But this is not the end of the scripture. And to focus only on this part is to take the word of God out of its proper context. Because the scripture continues getting more specific. It says, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. That clarifies the scripture is not referring only to images, but specifically to images that are idols. If we get confused, or if we're not sure if we should interpret the scripture as prohibiting all images, we know that that cannot be a proper interpretation because later, God commands images not only to be created, but to be utilized in the context of ritual worship. For example, the bronze snake, the two golden cherubim atop the Ark of the Covenant, and the flowers, fruit, trees, and animals which decorated the temple. Plus, if you really thought God completely prohibited all images without distinguishing images from idols, then why are you watching YouTube? Why do you have pictures of your family hanging around your house? Why do you have a TV? How many times have you seen Star Wars? These are all images, but I presume that you watch Star Wars because you do not believe that scripture condemns motion pictures like Star Wars. So why did Christians use art? Christians use art to teach and communicate abstract ideas with pictures, to help people understand something that might be a little hard to grasp. The, the Bible teaches some very abstract concepts Think about it, the spiritual soul, fallen human nature and sin, redemption, heaven and hell. These are all things that are difficult to grasp. Jesus himself was aware of this, so he used parables and miracles to make these things more tangible to his audience. Good teachers are aware of this, and they seek to use things to make abstract concepts more ta tangible, just like your child's teacher uses manipulatives to help them understand math 
or like cooks take pictures of their food to help you follow the, the recipes, or just like a publisher hires an illustrator to bring an author's story to life, just the way you watch a YouTube video to learn how to fix the, dish, the dishwasher, just like the way you watch The Chosen to experience more deeply the life of Christ. In this way, Christians utilize art, especially in churches, to help fathers tell their children the stories from the gospel. They could point to that stained glass window and retell the story of Christ's birth, or point to a statue of St. Joseph and explain how he hid Mary and the child Jesus in Egypt. These are lessons that Christians value, and so we pass these stories down to our children. Christian art makes these concepts much more tangible. Today, we have no problem utilizing art to tell stories about Jedis or Avengers. But not too long ago, when our culture was much more Christian, great artists used their talents not for pop culture, but to spread the gospel. And this seems very foreign to us now because now we associate art with celebrities. Art is something that is created by Elvis, the Beatles, or Michael Jackson, or movie stars like Will Smith and Johnny Depp. So when we see remnants of this bygone Christian culture, we're disconnected from it and we don't know what it means. And perhaps this confusion leads us to conclude that, oh, this, this must be some old form of idolatry. So Christians use art to teach the gospel. And that is why I have these things on the wall behind me. They're not just random decorations. They play a part in the mission of this channel, which is to teach the gospel. They serve a purpose by communicating certain values that we hold dear. But if you don't know what these things are, then perhaps you may misunderstand what, actually, what is actually going on here. So let's take a brief look at the art that I have. The first image is not even a religious painting. This is an insert from a famous 16th century painting by Raphael called the School of Athens. These are not saints. These are not even Christians. This shows two philosophers, Plato on your left and Aristotle on your right. Long after both of these philosophers had died, their philosophies had a dramatic influence on Western culture. First, Plato's idealism had a huge impact on the culture. You see how he's pointing upward? That's to indicate his idealism. If you're familiar with the writings of St. Augustine, he was greatly influenced by Plato. Then later, during the Middle Ages, Aristotle's writings were rediscovered. He was a realist. That is why he's holding his hand out in this way. The collapse of the culture that we are experiencing today can be understood not just as a rejection of the gospel, but also as a rejection of the work of Plato and Aristotle. Now to move all the way to the other side, here we have another philosopher, a Christian philosopher. This is St. Thomas Aquinas. He is one of the most important teachers of Christianity in history. When Aristotle's works were rediscovered, it was Aquinas who realized that Aristotelianism would be more effective than Platonism as a philosophical system for teaching Christianity. So he set out to teach the faith using the logic and reasoning from Aristotle's realism, and this method became known as Thomism. Next, we have a famous painting from the early Renaissance by an artist named Fra Angelico. This is a depiction of the Annunciation from the Gospel of Luke. When the angel appears to Our Lady, he announces the gospel, and this is the first explicit proclamation of the gospel message from the mouth of the angel to the ears of Our Lady. The Holy Spirit comes upon her, the word becomes flesh within her, and then she goes out. She makes haste to bring this message to her cousin Elizabeth. When she arrives, she says, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. Fra Angelico tries to capture all of that from the Gospel of Luke in this famous painting, and that is why I have it hanging here because it is at the heart of everything that we do here. This central image is called Our Lady of Guadalupe. It is a miraculous image that appeared on the cloak of St. Juan Diego during an apparition of Our Lady in the year 1531. The significance of this image is that prior to this apparition, the people of his region were pagans. They were involved in human sacrifice, perhaps killing as many as 250,000 people per year. This miracle initiated mass conversions to Christianity, and it is hanging here because we would love to see mass conversions back to Christianity in our time. Now lastly, I have this statue of the Blessed Mother. 
Catholic statues are not intended to be just images of the person they represent, but more specifically, they are supposed to represent what the person might look like right now in heaven. The purpose then is to encourage us in our faith to know the person's story and to have this representation of their salvation serves for us as a constant reminder of God's grace, his mercy, and his saving power. And ultimately, that is the purpose of Christian art. It turns our hearts toward God and makes us aware of his work in our lives. This is very different from secular art, which too often turns our attention towards unrestrained passions. The kids who got into these vans weren't just leaving home, they were leaving behind the culture of their parents, their values, their traditions, to, to create a new world, a better world. So what do you think? Did it work? Is this a better world? Or have we become more selfish, more self-absorbed?